Okay, go. If I wanted to continue hating myself. Mm -hmm. But it's like... Like, I think... I think impatient was a really big wake-up call for me. Not just because it made me genuinely realize I hated McDonald's. Like, I knew already. And, oh, yeah. But, like, it made me realize that it wasn't good for me. And that was the connection I wasn't making. Even though a lot of other people were like... Like, people said to me... Like, even before I went into inpatient, people said to me, we're worried about you. Yeah. If you stay at this job we are genuinely worried about your safety and mental health. Like, yeah. and it's like, when somebody said, when a couple of people say that to you, it's like... Well, maybe there's would, something going on here. Yeah, maybe there's something I should be listening to here. Um, I just no, remember... No, no, no. I just remembered, too, that at some point I didn't wait long enough for the water to drop when I got to that part. So, mm -hmm. yeah, if I get, if I get back there. But, um... But it's like, it's like this fight to not, like, it's it's almost like a fight to just, like, trust people again. Yeah. And, like, not hate myself and think I'm a good person. Yeah. And, oh, that's the hardest part. And, yeah. And, like, this, like, and I didn't, I didn't cut, but I found other ways to self-harm and self-punish. And so, like part even part of it like right after you know like at, right after leaving mcdonald's part of this was trying to break that habit too yeah so like i just thought of another thing why we probably have less energy is that we're fighting the bad habits too like we talk yeah. about how ex exhausting it is to do these things oh god okay i'm okay can i spin jump no <laughs> Sad no. I think you have to get past there to get the water to go down. I think it's timed. I don't know. You do? I don't know. Anyway, um... Talk. Ugh. But you can't talk because I fucking suck at this level. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I don't think it's that... I don't think it's 100% that you learned about a certain thing that made you act differently. I think it's a lot of things that happen to coincide with right. learning that thing. I'm okay. Right. And... Right, no. It's gonna go down. Remember? It's gonna go down. If you just stand on top of that pipe, it's gonna go back down. The water's gonna go back down. Yeah, I think it's timed. Oh. Okay. You just said that. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> That's me only. That's me like half listening and then realizing I'm talking about it. And then because the first time I made it over there, I took a little longer, and it was up when it was at the question block, so I could get the mushroom, and then it went <laughs> down there. Hello. No, that was me mashing my jump button. Okay. <laughs> Do you hear that? That's me yes. mashing my jump button and not jumping. <laughs> yes. Fuck this game. <laughs> uh, so. Yeah, I think it's time because I took the first time I made my giant escape. It I had taken longer, so it was up at the question block, so I could get the mushroom, and then it went down because I waited. And you probably should wait so you can just run underneath it. But you can't wait at the beginning of that current. You have to wait on top of the pipe. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That begin this beginning part you can't wait here because then no. you can't finish the level sufficiently no. enough. Don't so you have so. to get past here in order to wait for the pipe, I think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what were we talking about? I can't remember. Uh, I get so excited. Correlation and causation. Oh, and... correlation and causation, yes. yes so... How much we hate ourselves and we're working right, on right. it. And how that's exhausting to try uh -huh. to fight old patterns that I can't speak for Lizzie, but I can speak for myself. You know, things that I've... It's like things I've been telling myself probably since consistently. I mean, like, on and off, but consistently since 1997 or 1998. And yeah. I'm trying to break that now. <laughs> yeah, mine didn't get that bad until, like... Or, or, like, perspective for age, because 97, 98. But, like, for age, like, since I was, um, like... Like junior high age so yeah. that would have been like 12 13 yeah and I, I i'm like 29 now 
So well, I, I started talking about like mine wasn't that bad, but um, I could be minimizing my feelings again. Okay. <laughs> As you know, we tend to do that. And just just to clarify. Lizzie says we a lot when we're talking about this, and even like even when we're talking about it on Skype, she says we. But it's because our experiences we think so eerily similar. I'm sorry, I've absorbed it, you. It kind of is inherently a we. Th <laughs> like I'm I'm very I used to do that a lot. I used to do a lot of we and us and stuff like, <laughs> until I was like, wait a minute, I need to talk about my experiences. But in this case. It's kind of apropos. Yes, so. feel free to tell I'm, me that I'm wrong if I ever use we. Oh, but no, I... most, most of the time you're right. So. <laughs> and <laughs> usually what I mean by we, I was talking about like people like me yeah. that have yeah, this kind of problem. True. That's what I usually right. mean. Yeah. And I usually include you in that too because we have <laughs> similar problems. So, <laughs> um, But yeah, I think I might be minimizing my problems from middle school because I was pretty upset in middle school and then high school... I had some friends. Then college, I kind of repressed it pretty good. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I talked about this on camera very much, because I... Okay. Um, no, no, no! No! Aw. <laughs> um, I've told you about this a little bit, but I don't know if I talked about this much on camera, but... Part of the reason why I have such low self-esteem is because of my older sister. And, oh. yeah, I'll just... Cliff Notes version, um, she has a mental illness. <laughs> as you die. <laughs> I'm not laughing at her mental illness, I'm <laughs> laughing because of how many hammers I dodged and then I died. Yep. I'm not laughing at you. <laughs> she has a mental <laughs> illness and she had it pretty much her entire life. And part of her mental illness was a lack of empathy for others and being very manipulative and gaslighting and controlling and all those wonderful things that makes you question whether or not you're a good person because of what your older sister says. Right. Because she would be so adamant in her version of events that, well, maybe I remember it wrong. Maybe I did promise to do something with her and then didn't and now she's angry at me and I'm a terrible sister for that right. you know, stuff like that for the entirety of when she lived with us Up and she's five years older than me so she moved out like right as I started going into high school or something like that but um, I didn't realize it at that time and so when I was at college we hung out a bit more and she continued this and I thought, you know, it was just being friends and sisters and, you know, she was cool and older and had cool friends and all these wonderful yeah. things. Okay. Oh, <laughs> okay. So then it continued and got worse as her illness developed, too. Right. And uh, long story short, I finally realized that I needed to cut contact with her. And That's... yeah. And, but that didn't, I didn't realize at the same time that I needed to work on my uh, mental image of how others would react to me. Because basically what I did is I internalized her reactions and applied it to everyone else. Right. So I would assume they would react the way my sister did. And so I would become terrified of that. And eventually I got into counseling after it got, you know, unsustainable. And that was um, in graduate college, just like a few years ago, actually. So... I've been this far yet, dude. I'm, I'm just going to keep talking calmly. Wait for the water to go down. Oh my god. Oh my god. Um, so... Then recently... Uh, her... Oh my god, I went too fucking early, bro. I oh. went too early! I went too early! Those fish oh look god. hilarious, by the way. I do. And I knew I could kill them by just running into them, so I thought I could do that to clear out some room to... Uh, no. Um, so recently, it finally came to a head that, um, her illness got so bad that she was finally able to be committed to a, a mental hospital, uh, because she had become a danger to herself and others. It was a fight, though, because she can be very convincing 
you know, she convinced me I was a terrible person. Right. So she and she's very good at pretending that she's sane. Right. But it got to the point where she was adamant that <laughs> it wasn't oh even <laughs> out. Frame, dude. It's one fucking frame. It wasn't even out. It was not okay. It, it was actually. I saw it, but that was that was pretty bullshit. So it got to I, the point. At least I figured out how to get past this part. Anyway, it got to the point where, like, she couldn't hide it anymore. Like, um, she used to be able to hide these things that she believed, but eventually it got to the point where she believed everyone was out to kill her. There were spies. Any kind of van with tinted windows was spying on her and was going to kill her. And she thought she was a government uh, secret plan for, like, a special agent, genetic m mutation, that kind of thing. It was really out there. And uh, she just got so paranoid she couldn't take care of herself. She stopped eating and she thought that the air vents in her apartment were poisoning her. So she tried to camp out in her car at sub-freezing temperatures. And so that's eventually what got her committed. And she also hit her best friend, so... <laughs> that doesn't help anything. No. So she finally got committed, and for the most part, she kept insisting that she was totally fine. And the friend she hit was insisting that she was totally fine, so he was not a good friend. No. Um, he really enabled her behavior and helped her avoid getting help. And... Uh, but she first begged with our parents to let her out and then got angry at them when they wouldn't let her out. And But finally, she got on an, the right kind of medication, got a correct diagnosis of, um, I believe it was paranoid schizophrenia, which is a nasty one. Yeah. And she's on medication and she's on... She's in this, like, assisted living home for people with mental disorders, and she has a caseworker who helps her with her government funding and puts it in savings and helps her build her life back because she couldn't take care of herself and she just sort of destroyed everything she had. But, but she did at some point, right? Hmm? She was on her own at some point. Yeah. But That's what makes it really sad. It, it, it she makes never really feel hopeless. She never really was fully dependent, independent though, because she could. Uh, she never really wanted to work. Um, oh, okay. She would constantly ask our parents for money, even after she married someone. She would ask for money for help with rent and all these things, and then she would blow it on clothing and then ask for more money. So, she never really was... Ah. Uh, yeah, I've just been waiting for that guy to disappear. She never really was um, on her own. Right. So, don't feel too discouraged about that. But you see, this is, this is the thing with, with the higher functioning end of the autism spectrum. Because depending on what... If you guys ever want to look it up, like, feel free. It's really fascinating. At least I think it's fascinating stuff. Um, but, no! Uh, No, you're you're good. There's okay, water fine. there now. You're good. Okay, fine. Okay, I'm not gonna talk for a sec because this seems really scary. Okay, fine. Okay. Yoshi! Yo what the fuck? Um, I'm not going to go back for him. I think that's a good idea. Just wait for the water, dude. Mm -hmm. He can't come up if you're on the pipe, right? Yep. I hope he can't come up if you're on the pipe. As long as you're touching the pipe, you're fine. Okay. What are you doing, fish? Okay. <laughs> that was lucky. Oh no, there's another hammer guy over here, I think. Yeah, it is. But I'm gonna wait for the water. I think hook. that's a good idea, actually. It is time based. Okay. Oh, it's oh, over no, here. Oh, no, this part, I forgot. Uh, no! I tried it. I tried it. Anyway, um, to finish my story, uh, like, I forget why I started talking about this. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even remember why I started talking about this. 
just to explain why certain things happened, I guess. And, uh... I don't know. <laughs> what I was starting to say is the frustrating part of the higher functioning end of the autism spectrum um, is that I can function. <laughs> so I have the capability to function. And that's to... And, the, and I have the ability to have insight to know what's wrong. And <laughs> I'm like literally like face kind of half face palming now because because I know I know what's wrong. In theory yeah. I know how to fix it. I know what's wrong. In theory I know how to fix it. But I'm so petrified of like like to give you some perspective. Like it wasn't until the last maybe month or two of my job, or the last little part of my job, I was there for three years. It wasn't until the last month or two that I wasn't afraid of getting fired when I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. After having been there for almost three years. I thought my best friend was going to leave me nearly every day until two months ago. So, like... Interestingly enough, when I met this guy, I'm kind of maybe seeing kind of maybe I'm not really sure because I've never done this thing before thing, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's what that is. <laughs> so, like, the fear is real. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, how much do it's like, how much do I actually push through it? How much can I push through it? How much do I actually want to push through it? Like, the trade-off of, like, working so much is with the couple of times, like, I only worked for my radio job for about two weeks, and I was so tired. Like, I took time off, I came to this job that I'm at now, and I'm, like, fairly, like, somewhat worn out, and I've already been there two months at part-time. So, like... How much do the independence do I want if I think I'm going to be tired all the time? Like, what is that worth the trade off? Like, yeah. Or, eh, you know, there's so many questions and it's. Yeah. Like, and there's and then, no... like, all the questions in them in and of themselves. Each individual question is scary, much less the whole package of questions together are scary. And there's and, like... no real re way to know unless you do it, you know? Yes, exactly. And that's scary too. And, uh... Exactly. But I think, I think the thing that I find comfort in with that is that that's scary for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And I take comfort in the fact that, like, getting a new job or, you know, trying to build independence to get your own place and all this other stuff is, like, part of life. And that's, that's not just a part of someone's life who deals with anxiety and depression and whatever. That's just a part of, of that's a part of growing up. Yeah. Right. So I do take a little bit of comfort in the fact that, that like, you know, that that's part of growing up. The part that frustrates me is A, because I went to college and I did relatively fine there. Mm -hmm. And B, because of how old I am. Like, that's, yeah. I feel like I've lost. And that's where I feel like the late diagnosis of this is also frustrating. Or because I've been diagnosed with, diagnosed with bipolar for so long, the incorrect diagnosis has been frustrating. Because there's so many things. There's so many things you could do. I could have, had I just, like, I mean, but I mean, you can't do what ifs, but if, had I just known. That this was what it was. Like, I could have started, like, seeing a therapist that specialized in this. Right. And, like, and then, like, got maybe better medication that dealt with this. Yeah. And. Oh, you were. Like, wait, wait. There you go. And, like, <sighs> because what happened is they diagnosed me with bipolar. And then they put me on medication but for bipolar. And oh. I responded to the bipolar medication. Yeah. So. Oh, God. Oh God. oh, God. oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Do it. Okay. Okay. 
We're good. No, 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 nope, the Chief Chiefs! Good because I fucked up with the Chief Chiefs, bro. Okay. I think I can stay through this in water. Okay. This I have to jump over. Yoshi! Okay. Have I gotten here? No. Okay. Okay, fuck Yoshi. Oh, Kate. the lag is just killing us. I think... Okay, we're at 20 minutes. Let's just play out a little bit more to finish up the ideas. Because the lag is getting too bad. But I think we can actually finish this level now. I'm starting to get faith. Yeah, I think eventually we'll be able to do it. I don't think but it'll I be don't like think it's the. Be this week. I don't think it'll be this week, and but I don't think it'll be like the ice level. Right. I remembered why I was uh, mentioning my sister, though. I was mentioning uh, when I started to feel this way was in middle school. Oh right, right, right. Yeah. And uh, like min minimizing my emotions because anytime I get upset. Well, clearly, I was in the wrong because she was also upset, and she was more upset, so how dare you be upset right. when she was hurt by whatever I did, you know? So right. I got told that my feelings weren't valid, and no matter did how... You now, did you tell yourself that, or did other people tell you that? My sister did. Oh, your sister told you? Oh, wow. My sister, when I was upset... She would tell me I had no reason to cry because she had it worse. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, like genuinely. I mean, yeah. Like, I'm really I, I sorry laugh because that. that's just my reaction to do that. But yeah, she. I mean, literally one time when I was crying because of something I forget. I block out a lot of it to be honest. Yeah, um, no kidding. No I blame. started crying and she said. Like, my parents told me, told her that she made me cry. And this was, like, when we were close to being adults, too. And then she said, good, because I've cried a lot, too. Yeah, that's no empathy right there. That is yeah. zero empathy and understanding of yeah. situations and people. And feeling. she said that, like, she had more things to cry about and all these things. So that's why I tend to minimize things. Right. Like, I, ha I tell myself, oh, it's not that bad, don't don't be upset about it because if I got upset about it I would make Gwen get angry at me and Gwen is my sister uh, <laughs> I would get she would become angry at me and uh, so tell me that I was wrong so it was just easier to tell myself I was wrong yeah and it's interesting you said before to <sighs> Uh, you said earlier, too, that, you know, you thought that people... Something about how people would react to you like your sister would react to you, or like... Yes. What was that? Like, react to you, but then also, like, think that, like, the same way. Yeah, like, I, if, I took oh, if what... if she thought of me this way... I took what I learned from her and applied it to everyone else. Right. The interesting thing about me is it wasn't... I just assumed... And I, I'm really trying to break this, but I incor incorrectly, I admit, I incorrectly assume, and it took me a long time to realize that it's incorrect, I incorrectly assume that everyone will view me how I view me. So with you, it was your sister, but with me, like, I had gotten myself so convinced like, I had hated myself so much that it was almost like I turned in to your sister for myself. Like, where it's like, I would start to cry and it'd be like, oh, there's no point in crying. You you shouldn't cry. You don't have well, it Well, eventually bad. I started to do the work for her, yes. <laughs> right. But, like, no one ever did that for me. Yeah. No one, there was no catalyst for me to have other, like, early, I mean, there was a little bit, you know, when I was younger and, like, you know, like... You know, in elementary school when I got bullied and I shit. I shouldn't like... have gone for Yoshi. Yoshi always kills me. <laughs> so, like, elementary school started that, but by the time it got to junior high and high school, like, I had done all the work. Yeah, I don't like... know if, if it would have happened without my sister or not, because, you know, some people are just more susceptible for depression and anxiety. Absolutely, I agree. Um, Maybe it wouldn't have been as bad, but I was also right. bur bullied in middle school, too, so... Right. Screw well, you I was guys. in elementary school, and then I wasn't really bullied in high, middle school or high school. I, they did, they did a little bit of work, and then my mom brought me to therapy, and then like all the therapists wanted to do was analyze and talk, right? Mm -hmm. So, Aww. so that's another thing like I had to break, and something I learned with, with my best friend 
is like because he compartmentalizes things and I got so used to telling everyone everything about everything and then he's like when I was like I feel like a bad friend because I don't want to talk about x subject he's like it's okay and I'm like <laughs> what and he's like yeah you don't have to tell me everything about you and I don't have to tell you everything about me and we can still be friends and I'm yeah. like what a weird concept because when you go when I go in for therapy I tell them everything about everything because yeah. we talk about it so I've gotten so used to talking with everyone about everything that it's like yeah it, it's hard for me to break this habit of like keeping things as mine and so, so like I've been working on that and like one of the things I hate oh, to do that gets messy too one of yeah. the one of the things I hate to do is cry because the moment I start crying, I get like stuck in my head thinking, oh God, they're going to think you're trying to manipulate them because that's what my sister did. She would say, you know, don't cry. You're just trying to, you know, win the argument or whatever, you know? So anytime I start crying, I get upset and I cry more, but then I can't stop. And all I right. want to do is stop. And uh, right. I just, uh... Oh yeah. I just, I've been crying like without wanting to cry since high school no. so i will basically randomly start tearing up for things people and then people react to that they're like oh my god i didn't mean to make you cry and so i've literally just had to tell people ignore the tears i am still functioning i am still okay i am still dying to that fucking hammer every <laughs> life for the past five lives this is this but is it this is but it. I, tell, I tell my friends, friends and family, ignore the wow. <laughs> I tell them ignore the crying because I can still process what you're saying intellectually. Like it's separated the emotional and the intellectual has separated so much that yeah. I can tear up and not realize I'm tearing up, but still have a completely competent and rational conversation. And I've been able to do that since high school. Like, and my therapist in high school was so confused. He's like, how can you do that? I'm like, I don't know, because I'll start tearing up. And then literally, like, 30 seconds later, it'll stop. Like, I never started. 